Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is another attack meta video. As you guys know, in these videos, I go through the most popular and most powerful attack strategies at each town hall level. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any 11v11 uh, three stars to show, so we're not going to talk about 11v11 because it's so rare right now. But if I do see um, Town Hall 11 three stars and other Town Hall 11s, you guys will be the first to see them on the channel. Uh, but without that, we're going to start here at 10v11 two stars and probably the second most powerful strategy, it's been consistent for a long time, is going to be this uh, gobo attack. Just golems and bowlers. And the idea is you're using um, a golem, some bowlers, and a rage to create one funnel. And then on the other side, maybe another golem and more bowlers, or a golem and the queen, or just some baby dragons. But the idea is you're just really bringing three golems, a lot of bowlers, um, not a whole lot of other troop space and other stuff, and just trying to create the funnel and then get a actual you know substantial kill squad to go towards that town hall and get it taken out. There's a lot of different variations, but they all involve using typically three golems and quite a few of bowlers plus the CC of bowlers here. Now, it's a very segmented attack, so you send in like one force, um, sometimes you get the CC lure, like in this attack. Sometimes you don't lure the CC, it depends on the base. Um, but it's segmented, you wanna create the funnel, um, typically with a golem and some bowlers. Then on this attack, the funnel on the other side didn't need to be created as much because it was a natural funnel. The troops kind of went in on their own, but sometimes you'll have to funnel on both sides. So a golem and bowlers to back it up on both sides, or if there's a lava hound in the CC, you can use the queen to funnel on one side and just don't have her going to the base, save more bowlers to send into the base. Uh, but you wanna typically bring two rages, a freeze, a heal, and a jump. Um, that's kind of the standard spell composition for this strategy, uh, that freeze and heal, very important for going over giant bombs in the Inferno Tower. You can't use all rages like you could with Valks. This next one we're going to take a look at is the dragon strategy. You guys have seen quite a bit of this on my channel um, as well, and uh, it's kind of similar. You know, you're still creating the funnel, and then you're going to dive those dragons to the town hall. So um, a lot of the principles of 10v11 are going to stay the same in creating the funnel, sending some kind of force towards the town hall, and then making sure you have the percentage to finish up and uh, get that 50%. Now, I do want to say an honorable mention, um, one that will not be shown in this video, but is nonetheless still probably the third most popular strategy after dragons and after the three golem gobo is going to be a Valk hybrid, typically some kind of queen walk, then uh, golem bowlers on the other side, then like 10 to 12 Valks, maybe eight to 12 Valks to dive the town hall. Um, similar to a gobo, but replacing some of those bowlers with Valks and possibly doing a queen walk uh, to create the funnel on one side. And that's also very powerful. It can work on certain bases. You want to look for a base that's um, probably better to um, better suited for Valks just on the town hall dive. Um, just kind of use your judgment there in terms of what you should use for that town hall dive. But um, to get back to this one here, um, I've talked a lot about it in my last uh, attack strategy video, just a few videos back on how to do the two star attempt with these dragons. But the basic principles are just creating the funnel on both sides and just diving those dragons to the town hall. You gotta be careful, dragons aren't great percentage troops, they're better for a town hall dive, especially in the core of the base. It's There's not a whole lot of percentage to be gotten because there's so many high HP buildings, there's so much damage. Um, so typically you wanna get some solid percentage with your funneling troops, like your king, like your queen, if you do a queen walk. On this one he used a few more dragons and um, just a queen with a golem in front of her on one side and I think a king and some bowlers or something on the other side. So um, small funnels but the dragons are able to push deep into the base, get more besides the town hall and get a 59 percenter right here. So nice attack um, to Sarah and uh, that being said those are the main three strategies. Um, the top two shown here, the dragons and the gobo. Let's move on to some Town Hall 10v10 action. So how else could we start but bringing out the miners? 
I'd say this strategy is probably the most popular right now, and it's the best, I've said this before, it's the best against lower tier Town Hall 10s. Um, this one is one of my attacks, and you can see that it can crush some mid to low tier Town Hall 10s. It's just an overpowering strategy. Um, the idea is typically gonna be the same. There's, there's less variation in this than there is in other attacks. Basically, you're gonna drop down uh, one hero on each side of the base. Now, sometimes you don't do a queen walk. I'd say most of the time you do, but you can do a just suicide queen or a queen golem, just one golem to tank for her. On the other side, sometimes you bring a golem to tank for the king. Typically not though. Typically it will look like this with the queen walk, then the king just no tanking. The king is the tank and some bowlers behind him. Um, I only need one rage for the queen walk. You want to try to pick a queen walk that's going to help funnel the miners into that first inferno tower, but also not going to take too much damage. You don't want to have to invest more than uh, two rages on that queen. And if you only have to use one, uh, you can rage up the king on the other side and possibly bowlers because the miners typically don't require more than three spells. I don't like raging up miners. Some people do. Um, I think it's typically unnecessary in about 90% of bases, so I just go with the three heals, especially against lower tier Town Hall 10s that have less uh, hit points in their base. So um, the Queen staying away from the Lava Hound, of course that's going to be important, as it is in pretty much any type of uh, attack with the Lava Hounds in the CC, um, which is a lot of them at Town Hall 10. So anyway, the Miners moving through. The Miners typically can deal with both Inferno Towers. It's a lot easier if the Skellies are set to air the skeleton traps, but it's not impossible if they're not. And uh, if you can trigger some with your heroes, that's even better because the skeletons are tough for the miners. Um, one thing I want to point out, you want to be careful with when you encounter the heroes. So if the heroes attack your miners right before they engage an Inferno Tower, that can be deadly because the uh, the Inferno Tower will basically be on those miners as they uh, move away from the Inferno and towards the heroes, and that can screw up the pathing into that Inferno Tower. So typically you want to drop the miners um, to the point where they'll take out an Inferno Tower, then in between Inferno Towers, they'll engage the enemy king, enemy queen, whatever is still going to be there after your king and your queen go through. So you want to be careful um, because Skelly Traps and enemy heroes and possibly CC troops, gotta make sure there's a Lava Hound in the CC. Uh, but mainly, Skeletons and enemy heroes are very deadly um, to miners, especially right as they're uh, encountering an Inferno Tower when they're the most vulnerable. Okay, so moving on to what I think has become the second most popular attack strategy, and that's some kind of Laloon. Um, Laloon has so many variations because it's so base specific. You have to be creative. This was such a nice attack here by Dao, and you can see the uh, CC is offset a little bit, so he comes in with a golem, and the queen behind gets such good value. The queen will step up for the inferno. She'll also, I think, get the air defense and the defensive queen, so in insane value here, but that's what you have to do. Be creative, and I think it's become the second most popular attack strategy because we've seen people trying to defend against miners, um, trying to defend against hogs to some extent, so we're seeing people trying to brace for other strategies, especially the uh, Witch Bowler. All those ground strategies are making bases more vulnerable against air, and I think that's kind of helped this become um, a very viable strategy against certain bases that no longer have the same amount of things to defend against air. This one actually has air skellies, which a surprising amount of bases still do. I don't think it's very effective, but it can um, hurt some air attacks, although this base was just crushed. He had so much... Um, left over for the Laloon because he got such good value with his queen, uh, but it was also so efficient in terms of the spell investment and the troop investment. And look, a swag king for cleanup. So be creative with your Laloon. Look for places to exp exploit the base, such as where the CC is located, where the Infernos, the air defenses, the queen are, and just try to get some good value with a kill squad, big or small, and then Laloon the rest of the base. Don't be afraid to use a skeleton spell to take down the queen. You don't always have to get her with your kill squad, although it does make it a little bit easier. So that will do it. Um, Town Hall 10, we are also seeing hogs and <clears throat> the witch bowler, of course, both very popular strategies, but I think they've become um, three and four, and the two I've shown are the most popular just because 
um, people are trying to defend against those ground strategies more, especially Witch Bowler. They're not ready for the miners, and they're especially not ready for an air attack such as La Loon. Um, so I'd say focus on miners, especially if you're hitting lower tier Town Hall 10s, but also La Loon's a good way to trip up an even max Town Hall 10 base. Um, it can really wreck some bases that are not ready for that kind of air composition. So let's transition into Town Hall 9 attack strategies. Have three to show, um, maybe the three most popular, uh, but three I want to at least show because they've become more popular, especially this first one. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. It's the pretty much just a queen walk attack, but there's no golems. And I like to see that. I like seeing a max um, CC of hogs. So really, uh, very. it was uncommon for a while to not see any golems and to not see any CC bowlers. They were such staples at Town Hall 9. But um, it can be very effective. Um, bases are getting very weird in how they're designed just to defend against all kinds of crazy stuff. So using a queen walk can often get you some incredible value as long as you can take out point defense, take out splash damage, whatever, and not have your queen take too much damage in between. Have her take just the right amount of damage to know she's getting good value, but not enough to make you have to invest rages or the ability or whatever to, uh, to take out or to keep her up. So um, this one actually, the hog deployment wasn't that good. A few hogs kind of went down early, but um, it's there's a lot of room for error. Those level, what is it, seven hogs are just so powerful, so tanky. Um, they're very difficult for the base to take out. And I like dropping the king in front of the queen with like a baby dragon. Um, that's just so powerful. And with the king out in front, the queen doesn't need to have any type of uh, rage as much as she would if she was alone. So you get better value, um, just an all around good investment. I like the heroes together with the healers on them. You gotta be careful that the healers don't peel off onto the king, but this one is a popular strategy. We've seen it so much in One Hive Genesis that I had to show it. Um, look for a good place to queen walk the base and then just hog the rest. That's, that's all you gotta do. It'll crush some bases and you don't have to overthink funneling and stuff as much as you would in a more golem base attack with a CC of bowlers and all that good stuff. So uh, moving on to the next one here, it is going to be an air attack, of course. Um, still see tons of those at Town Hall 9. And I think we've seen a little bit of a switch away from the Queen Walk on these La Luna attacks. I'm not sure why, but um, for these air attacks, I think it's a little bit safer just to bring the, the traditional golem the heroes behind. Now, if there's Lava Hound in the CC, using a small kill squad can be a little bit trickier because the queen is such an integral part of your attack if it's just her and the king. So um, probably don't do this if there's a Lava Hound in the CC. But if not, just send in like a basic kill squad. People are getting weird with their bases. They're putting air defenses right next to the queen um, because so many different things are trying to be defended against that um, oftentimes they forget the basics. They're gonna give you some good value with like a one golem, what is it called, cold-blooded I think? Yeah, cold-blooded uh, entry there with just one golem, the heroes, a few wizards. Wizards are always good to throw behind golems, especially if there's no lava hound in the CC. Four troop space, but gets you much more damage and the duration of that golem will just tank for that wizard. So I like bringing extra wizards for sure. Uh, minions down early for cleanup. Can't stress that enough. I see so many Town Hall 9s running out of time. That is the number one killer. Not any type of like damage, the troops dying, but just running out of time. And if you just got your cleanup down quicker, if you brought more cleanup, um, if you dropped stuff, if you just dropped your troops quicker, you didn't wait as long on your queen walk or whatever, so many attacks could be saved. Not just on these uh, La Luna attacks, but on hogs, on pretty much everything. So something to keep in mind for you guys. Anyway though, the uh, balloons making their way through, and uh, I've found typically you don't want to haste balloons while they're being healed because they're fine. They're, they're being healed. They don't need to move quickly. Save the hastes for when they have no heal on them, and then they really are starting to go down. That's when you want to move them quicker because that's when they're in danger of going down. If anything, you're hasting them out of a heal, which actually isn't that good of a benefit because they're not getting as much heal time as they otherwise would. So hastes and heals are best, occasionally a rage, but at Town Hall 9, you don't need that extra damage as much. So typically, I just like bringing, well, I don't, I'm not a Town Hall 9, but I would recommend bringing hastes and heals for your loons um, at Town Hall 9. So had to show this one, still a good strategy, still can crush some bases. 
Um, I'm not as big of a fan as this one because it seems a little bit inconsistent and it seems difficult to predict whether it will work or not, but um, it can crush some bases, I'll be honest. Um, and it's been like that since witches were, uh, I think, changed in the last update. I don't know, something happened in that last update to make this more possible. So anyway, uh, basically just a golem, uh, one to two golems, a CC of bowlers, your heroes, going in, then like three or four witches on either side of the base with some wizards. Um, make sure to bring wizards with your witches. That's so important, guys, um, because the, the witches don't do enough damage to move through the base quick enough. You need those wizards right beside them, dealing the damage. Um, take advantage of the tanking of the skeletons, drop those wizards, I'm a big wizard fan, whether it's putting them behind golems or putting them behind witches, um, very effective and I think Tom does that to some extent, few witches working on the outside, that's what's going to take out those defenses quick enough before the skeletons all go down and the witches themselves get targeted, so good use there, look for bases that have um, just kind of a traditional square boxy setup. Um, that you can easily funnel your um, kill squad into without your bowlers walking and can keep them in a narrow compartment moving through the base with two jumps and don't have to worry about the bowlers or anything straying on you and uh, as long as there's not a whole lot of splash damage and giant bombs on the outside of the base the witches will be fine especially if you use healers on them you don't have to but if you drop two healers on either side those witches are almost invincible um, so something to think about there. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And uh, let me know if I missed any attack strategies in the comments. If I did, be sure to let me know. I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.